Join me tonight as I explore two of the most extraordinary towns in southern Italy. It's weird to me. I use my loaf to make traditional bread. Don't adjust them. They were perfect. <laughs> and I get excited by authentic recipes. Leave it rustic, leave it rustic. This is my Italian escape. I love visiting places in Italy, which are unusual, intriguing, and still relatively untouched by holidaymakers. So I have come to Puglia, a traditionally poor region with unique character. If you look at the boot of Italy, Puglia forms the hill of the boot. Today, I'm starting off in the west of the region, in the town of Altamura. For 2,000 years, bread making here has flourished in dozens of small bakeries. Altamura is world famous for its rustic bread. The loaves have a very thick crust, which gives them a two-week shelf life. For peasants and shepherds in the fields, this was their staple diet. And for modern-day Italians, bread is still everything. Very rarely you will see an Italian family sitting down at the table eating without any bread. I mean, as far as I can remember, from when I was a little boy, we always had bread on the table. The essential crop needed to make Altamura's legendary bread is durum wheat, and field upon field of it surrounds the town. Puglia's climate and flat landscape are perfect for growing the wheat. I've come to meet a man whose family holds the secrets to the town's outstanding reputation for making Italy's prized loaves. Giuseppe Di Gesù and his family have been making and selling bread in this bakery since 1850. They bake the bread in a brick oven that burns oak wood. The loaves have the aroma of toasted coffee and a mild taste of vanilla. But the guys here don't just bake their own bread. The community are in on the act as well. Local lady Emilia knows what makes a good loaf. Buongiorno. Buongiorno, buongiorno. Ho portato il pane. Ah, benissimo. 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 Okay, they, uh, she makes this bread at yeah. home and I make it into, the, into my home. Why do you do that? Uh, because it's an old tradition. Well, she doesn't trust your bread. She yeah. makes her own bread. Uh, yes. <laughs> you must be very popular with the old ladies I around here. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> and after, because this is airs. So you stamp the bread. Okay. So each lady has their own uh, uh, stamp. Oh, yes. Oh, that's, that's, that's very cool. That's very cool. cool. Many of Altamura's women use Giuseppe's oven. This tradition dates back to when home baking was taxed. The government tried to stop people making too much bread and wasting wheat. As a result, women used the oven belonging to the local baker, and he controlled how much bread they made. The team are loading the oven for the next batch of bread, and I am desperate to get my hands dirty and make the local loaf before the oven door closes. Let's bake some bread. You can do like me. One, One. so, so, and after so, with then... Wait, you, wait, wait, you're going yes, too fast. Yes, so, yeah. and after with end, you can... Ah, okay. So this, okay. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Yes, slowly, slowly. Yeah. Okay, so now you need to fold it this way. Okay, and like after, this. yes. And now? And now I help you. Yeah. And after, so. Ah, like this. Yes. yes. Okay. Beautiful. That's all right. Bravissimo. <laughs> That's it? Okay. <laughs> Don't adjust them. They were perfect. <laughs> 
this job seems to me a very hard job. I mean, you come here very early in the morning, it's very hot. Mm -hmm. How do you keep the smile going? Hey, I have the smile because this is our tradition. This is the tradition of my family. These okay. are ready. The 300 loaves can now be cooked, including Emilia's personalized bread. Now we close the oven. The oven is sealed tight. Wet cloth is used to make the seal, and the bread inside is cooked at about 400 degrees centigrade. Okay. <laughs> Unlike normal bread, made with fine, soft flour, this dough is made with coarse flour from hard durum wheat, called semolina. Giuseppe tells me why the semolina is so special. È un terreno particolare, ricco di ferro, di sole, di calcio, di tutti quegli ingredienti che lo rendono speciale. So you just tell me that uh, the reason why the wheat in Altamura is so special is because the ground is full of iron, calcium, plenty of sunshine, and so th th that's the reason why they have the best semolina around. So Altamura's sun-hardened wheat creates its fantastic semolina. Combine this with centuries-old traditional methods and you have the prized bread. After an hour, the 300 loaves need to be unloaded. The smell, eh? The smell is very natural. There is no time to get chefy. We need to get the bread out, including mine. Gino, this is yours and this is mine. But my one looks much better. Oh, yes. Much better because it's, uh, it's got a more it's of a rustic much shape. Much Carry on better. before we okay. burn everything. <laughs> it is rustic bread after all. Allora, this is 300 pieces of bread. It's going to take an hour here. One hour, yes. Really? Via! 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 Well, I can't stand in front of this oven for an hour. I just have to get stuck in. Bravo, Gino! Don't worry, leave it to me. <laughs> you know what I like? That each piece of bread is completely different from another. Via! Vieni, ecco fatto. Bravo! Qua, qua, vai in fila, vai in fila. Aspetta, aiuto io, aiuto io. No, 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 in fila. Sicuro? Ah! Attenzione che scotta, eh? You got gloves, I got bare hands. Pay attention! I guess there is no time for any sympathy then. This is Emilia's brand. Ah, this is the one with the deep Oh, there you go. I hope she's going to be happy. Okay? It looks quite cool. With the oven empty, I want to discover how wheat has played its part in the area's cuisine. So I'm heading 20 kilometers through the golden fields to a place called Matera in the region of Basilicata. The old town here is amongst the most ancient in the world. And to me, it looks like a giant nativity scene. The natural caves in Matera's deep ravine were adapted to become homes thousands of years ago. But in the 19th century, a rapid population growth meant tightly packed insanitary cave homes. By the 1950s, disease was rife and the town's 15,000 inhabitants were evicted by the government, leaving a kind of ghost town. More than 50 years later, some people are starting to move back. Hidden away in the maze of streets, I've discovered a restaurant. I want to find out how this extreme hardship affected the local food. What we got here? This is called zuppa di grano e ceci, which means soup of wheat and chickpeas. And that's it. There is nothing more. Nothing I mean, broth more. Broth and tomatoes. What is it? Eh? Uh, yeah, maybe uh, some uh, tomatoes and broth. But the concept of the food in this region is uh, poor people cuisine. Cucina povera. It's made by ingredients coming from the poor people fields, so they didn't buy anything. Whatever they had in the land, they will put on the dish. Put on the dish. Hmm. Very simple, but very clean with flavor. I never had this before. Oh. Never tried it. So you just uh, like get it. the taste of Basilicata. 
and also the um, taste of wheat, which for us is very important food, the basic food of our meals. I also try another regional dish called chaledda, made with eggs and vegetables. So this is a great vegetarian dish. Yes, vegetables is another food of uh, the Basilicata region. Buono, buono, buono. Now I have sampled the cuisine I want to cook in the style of the region. So I've created a simple treat which uses Giuseppe's bread and the minimum of ingredients. It's my version of baked beans on toast. Cannellini beans on bruschetta. It's not bruschetta, but it's bruschetta. The sc bruschetta. What it means in Italian is toasted bread with anything you want on top. I'm coating both sides of the bread with olive oil and salt. Now, what you have to do is to put the bread on a very hot griddle pan. If you don't have a griddle pan, you can always do the bread under a very hot grill. And now for the fried topping, starting with beautiful red onions. And this is exactly what you should hear, the sizzling of the onions into the oil. Of course, always keep an eye on your bread. This dish wouldn't be the same without delicious cherry tomatoes. I'll leave the skin on, I'll left the seeds on, just cut them in quarter, put them in the middle of your hands and just squeeze them. So all the juices, they're gonna be released with the onion. That's it, the only thing you have to do, mix everything together and let it cook for an extra minute. I'm happy with my bread. Ah, have a look at this. This is exactly what I want. Golden bread with the oil and salt all over, beautifully toasted. Just let it rest, because as the bread is resting, the crust is gonna be even harder, but inside, nice and soft. And now I'm gonna add chopped flat leaf parsley and when I say chopped, I don't mean finely chopped. I want your parsley to be nice and rough, just like this, look. Leave it rustic, leave it rustic. Okay, give it a good shake. And now the cannellini beans. Now make sure you drain them from their water. Mix everything together and sprinkle over loads of black pepper. Now, have a look at this, all this bubbling. This is the juices from the tomatoes and the beans releasing, and I want you to leave it like that for one minute. My bread is cold, so to turn it into that authentic bruschetta, it needs to be rubbed with garlic on both sides. Look at this glistening bean and tomato mixture. Buonissimo. It will taste so amazing with my garlic bread. Oh yes, extra virgin olive oil to finish. You may call it this beans on toast, I'll call it bruschetta with cannellini beans. These beans really beat those baked ones. Simple, quick to make and delicious. I've come to Puglia a beautiful yet poor part of southern Italy. I couldn't visit the region without a trip to the rather bizarre looking town of Albero Bello. These cute little local houses are called Trulli and they have intrigued me ever since I first came here on holiday. I remember when I was a little boy, I must have been probably about five or six, and the first time I saw the Trulli house, I thought that the Smurfs lived here. Of course they don't. But with its fairy tale atmosphere, Albero Bello is a real draw for tourists. There are places where it's full of tourists. You know, shops, bars, you know, tourists, they're going up and down. And then there are places where it's very quiet, where people actually live in the truly. And it's, it's weird to me. Truly, were generally built as either storehouses 
or homes for agricultural workers. I want to take a closer look at these unusual buildings and tourist guide Katia De Carlo is going to show me around. Wow, the view is incredible from here. That's one of the best view of Alvaro Bello. Any reason why the roof is like a cone shape? Because cement, starting from the 15th century, was forbidden. So all these trolleys here, they're actually holding without any cement whatsoever? Today, you can find cement, but at the beginning, trolley houses were built without cement. The original trolley were built with limestone from local fields, and people used dry stone techniques. They could avoid paying taxes by dismantling the buildings. None of these quaint houses are exactly the same. While the outside of the trolley are intriguing, I've always wanted to see inside. Wow, this is very nice. But you know, I was expecting the ceiling to be a cone shape. Why, why is flat on top? It's over this roof. You see the opening? It was a storage. A storage to store food. And the smoke of the fireplace went up to smoke the food and to keep it longer. All the truly are modern like this inside? That's not all the truly houses are modern. This has been turned into a vacation home. This house feels surprisingly big. There are two bedrooms and this one was for the children. How many children they used to have? Ten children per family. Very fertile, uh, truly. And I love the uh, wooden beams here. Very rock and roll, I have to say. No, but in the past, they were used to cover the roof with other wooden beams. Okay. And imagine that children went to sleep in the roof. So okay. children slept at the bottom here yeah. and on the top. It's been fun to explore the houses, which fascinated me as a boy. But there is something that this chef has got to do in Albero Bello. Cook above the rooftops. I have the truly behind me, fantastic ingredients on my table. So I've decided to prepare pagnotta imbottita, which is bread stuffed with salame, cheeses and vegetables. Off comes the top of my rustic loaf. Once you take the top of the bread off, get yourself a tablespoon and take all the center of the bread out. Of course, don't throw the dough away, because what you can do with this one, you can make toasted bread crumb, meatballs or meatloaf. The first ingredients that we're gonna put in there is cheese. I'm using a local cheese that is called cacio cavallo. Lay the bottom of the bread, and it's very important to put the cheese first, because when you're gonna put the other vegetable in there, they're gonna have oil in it, and the cheese is gonna stop the oil oozing out of the bread. If you don't have cacio cavallo, a strong, firm cheddar will do the trick. Now, as soon after the cheese, we're gonna put the salame. And when you put the salame, make sure that you cover the sides of the bread. Parma ham or bresaola will also go really nicely with the cheese. After the salame, crochets. I'm using here grilled courgettes. They go in all over the side of the bread and make sure when you put the ingredients in that you press it down with your fingertips so everything gets very nice and tight. Now for a classic Puglian ingredient. These are sun dried tomato in oil and they're absolutely delicious because they're nice and sweet. They got all the herbs with it and I'm also relying on the flavor of the oil. Press them on top of the courgettes. On top of the sun-dried tomatoes, I'm gonna pour my roasted peppers. Don't panic, you can use the one in the jar. And it doesn't really matter what color peppers are, yellow, green, red, it's absolutely fun. Now, give it a good sprinkle of black pepper. And the last layer we're gonna do is to pour cheese on top. Is gonna help for you to press everything down and there is no oil that is gonna go everywhere. How easy is this? I'm happy with this. Make sure you cover with the top of the bread. And then you're just gonna have to put a little bit of pressure on top. 
that's it. The job is done. Now let me show you exactly what you're gonna get in the middle of my stuffed pagnotta. There you go, my pagnotta in bottita. Stuffed bread with salame, cheeses and vegetables. My favorite food on the go. This is the tastiest sandwich ever. A beautiful mix of colors and flavors. Before I leave Albero Bello, there is just time to catch the town's procession dedicated to Sant'Antonio, the saint of lost people. Albero Bello hasn't forgotten its traditions, and I'm pleased that the town I loved as a boy is thriving while respecting its humble past. <laughs>